The human authors of the Bible were very clear that God was speaking through them in their writing. Boom! Mic drop! Since the Bible says it's God's word, ipsoid factoid, it is God's word. That simply won't do, my dear boy. You've drawn the conclusion that the Bible is God's word because it says it's God's word. That's circular reasoning. Joke's on you. I can't even draw. If there were no historical context to the biblical record, you could argue that we have no basis to believe the Bible is God's word simply because the Bible says that it's God's word. But there is a historical context to the biblical record. As we've seen, the Bible is historically reliable. I don't like history. Just give me the Bible, brah. The Word of God is not limited to the Bible. The actual Word of God is Jesus, the second person of the Trinity. When we read the Bible or listen to a sermon, it is Jesus who is speaking and preaching to us through that Word. Because He is the Word. Even if you do believe that Jesus is the Word of God, how do you know that the Bible is consistent with what Jesus actually did and taught? So near the end of the Gospel account that John writes, he says, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. That's the reason why the Bible exists, so that you would believe in Christ and that you would have life in his name. Now once Jesus accomplished everything necessary for our salvation, the authority to proclaim the word of God was then given to the apostles. So Jesus commissions them, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. After the day of Pentecost, where over 3,000 people were added to the church, the word of the Lord grew. That's what I'm talking about, bro! Those guys were literally on fire for Jesus! And not only that, but their preaching was accompanied by miracles and signs that were performed in the name of Jesus. This showed that these men were from God. And so even before the Bible was written, the doctrines of the church were proclaimed, the people believed it by faith, and the church grew. It was only later that these same apostles and their associates wrote this word down and spread it throughout the churches, which already existed. These men had delusions of grandeur if they thought they were speaking for God. In Peter's second epistle, he says, For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now, being an eyewitness is important, but even eyewitness testimonies are subject to interpretation of the one who has seen these things. That's why Peter says their testimony is even more sure than that of an eyewitness, because it is the prophetic word. It's better than the simple eyewitness account that one might expect to receive. God actually reveals the truth behind everything that Jesus did and taught. Because, as Peter says, no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. No prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Again, the Holy Spirit was working through that word even before it was written down in the Bible. So when the church received these texts from the apostles, they recognized it for what it was, the very word of God. So mic drop? Sure, I, I'd say so. I mean, there's more that we can talk about as far as the messianic prophecies that were fulfilled by Christ or the way that Christ upholds the authority of the Old Testament through his teaching, but I suppose we can cover that in the next video. So for now, sure. Mic drop. Mic drop. Boom.